Recently, This is America and the World visited the Republic of Estonia. It's a small and beautiful European country located on the Baltic Sea with a population of only 1.3 million people. With its recent independence from the Soviet Union in 1991, Estonia is now leading the way as probably the most advanced digital country in the world. The people of Estonia are independent and creative, and the country is full of unique contrasts, both rich in history and its present-day innovation. Estonia, as a nation, deserves its important place on the world stage. This is America Visits the Republic of Estonia. This is America and the World is brought to you by Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Washington Diplomat, a world of news and perspective. The Sultanate of Oman. The Estonian American National Council, Enterprise Estonia and the European Regional Development Fund, and the Foreign Ministry of the Republic of Estonia. The U.S. China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, Julia Chang Block, President the Rotondaro Family Trust, the Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy, and the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. I had the good fortune to visit the Kadriog Palace and the honor to enjoy a wonderful conversation with the President of the Republic of Estonia, Kirsty Kaljulade. Madam President, good to sit with you. Wonderful to see you here in Tallinn. Thank you. The people here are so wonderful to us. Turn the clock back. Let's go to 1985. Oh, okay. You were a teenager? 15, teenager? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Tell me about your dad, your mom, growing up. Uh huh. I have to start a bit further, I feel. Uh, my grandfather worked for Estonian State in 1930s and uh, he had to go away from Estonia mm -hmm. and uh, his family was left behind because the sister of my mother was dying and my grandmother couldn't leave the country. Mm -hmm. Soviets uh, sent my grandmother to Gulag, not to Siberia but to Gulag uh, for anti-Soviet activities. Mm -hmm. As far as we know the only reason was that uh, they couldn't catch my grandfather, they mm -hmm. caught my grandmother. So uh, my mother grew up with the other family members, sisters, who happened not to be sent to Siberia. Mm. And, uh, and therefore I was living uh, in 1985 with my mother in a block of flats uh, in Tallinn. Uh -huh. uh, my mother is a doctor, but she wanted to study physics. But this was war science and Soviet Union did not let uh, the families which were not uh, respectful of the Soviet power or loyal to it, uh, even to study uh, uh, war sciences, for with example. The, with the brothers and sisters? Uh, I have one brother, yes, uh, and uh, he is an engineer. Uh, then he was in 1985, he was eight years old, and I had quite a lot of responsibility of yeah. also uh, taking care of him. Tough times? Tough times, uh, not yet food shortages, this came later. But what, why I told this family story is that it's quite typical for uh, all Estonian families. So we have this kind of, uh, of broken history uh, uh, and these 50 years of occupation left huge marks on, uh, on Estonian families and uh, on Estonia in general. Uh -huh. And we have really realized that uh, you have to stand up for your well, right to exist, right to be, right to decide for yourself. Because in 1939, Estonia did not fight back. We didn't, we didn't shoot. Our army officers were taking the opportunity to stand up for independent Estonia. And we've learned a lot from that. Mm. We have strong reserve army. We are prepared, like our neighbors Finland always are. Mm -hmm. And we are, well, active contributing uh, members of, uh, of NATO, mm -hmm. participating in many NATO's southern missions, knowing that uh, 
security has to be protected globally and we adhere to the liberal democratic values because we also realize that uh, liberal democratic values are the only ones which guarantee the right to decide for smaller nations. Interesting, you're talking about 1939, 1985, 1991 uh, independence. Again, independence again. And you look, I look at what's around me and what I see, you call it uh, rising from the ashes, hmm? Yes, I, you could call it this way indeed, absolutely. Our economy was in ruins mm. and uh, we knew what we had lost because before the Second World War, Estonia and Finland were quite comparable in their GDPs per capita. Mm -hmm. Finland is among the top nations uh, of the world uh, in GDP per capita. They have a top-notch education system, but we do have two. In yeah. PISA tests we also yeah. have uh, high results. And we can now see that in these 30 years we have caught up um, 25 years, which we, mm -hmm. from 50 we lost, if you look at economic development. Mm -hmm. It's extremely rapid change. And of course also this kind of uh, quick changes bring uh, the side effects, like quick concentration of people to the towns, some people in rural areas feeling uh -huh. depopulation and feeling like the success of the country has passed them by. Mm -hmm. So more and more we, uh, we see that we have to well, find ways to combat these uh, side effects, which well, came with every, uh, in every mm -hmm. country with mm -hmm. industrialization processes. Uh, and digital to, miracle, huh? Exactly. And that's why we plan to use the new technologies, dig mm -hmm. digital technologies. Big bet, wasn't it? A big bet on technology. No. It wasn't. You don't think? No, because I was there when it started. I was advising Prime Minister and, uh, and uh, the government took decision to uh, implement uh, digital ID. Mm -hmm. It did cost a few millions, probably less than a million dollars at that time to, uh, to find a solution uh -huh. which would uh, start us uh, off to provide digital identity to people which our private companies, banks, telcos were telling mm -hmm they would be also using as a platform to provide services as a self-identification means mm. because internet banking already existed. And what I want to say is that what we did for our public services started to develop already and was already visible in private sector. Ah. And therefore we didn't see this as a long bet. Instead we saw this as uh, not uh, being left behind mm -hmm. of technological development while the private sector was already doing these uh -huh. things. We want it to be as efficient and effective and modern in public sector and not for the sake of it but because actually we lacked resources to do things of the old way because well first for example first e service was tax board do you think that in soviet union in every small town existed a tax office mm -hmm. no soviet people did not get salaries therefore didn't pay taxes or it was all handled somehow in the through the workplace uh -huh. so we didn't have uh, these normal civil service offices uh, in rural areas, in smaller towns. Instead of developing them, we developed digital services. Yes. And of course, we had to encourage people to uh, start using them. But again, this was not so difficult neither, because we had just uh, passed through the stage when we had to encourage the whole nation to accept that their salary is paid into the bank accounts. <laughs> so uh, making sure that they now start using their computer accounts to pay taxes didn't seem such a tall order at all, I have to say. <laughs> Let me talk about some of the basics. Uh, population of uh, Estonia is what? 1.3 million. And the uh, capital city is uh, Tallinn? Tallinn, close to half a million. We'll put a map up on the screen. So talk a little bit about your neighborhood, the, the geography, your neighbors, huh? Yes, to the north, Finland, another fenno ugric uh, country whose language we understand almost without learning, whose TV we were watching during the occupation to um, to not lose the contact with a uh, democratic free world uh, mm -hmm. was extremely valuable uh, for all of us. To the south, there's Latvia, yeah. uh, our Baltic neighbor, a country with whom we uh, well, feel quite close and are very happy that uh, thanks to Schengen in Europe, we do not have a border between the two countries. Quite mm -hmm. a lot of business operation uh, uh, runs uh, well pan-Baltic uh, and also a lot of Nordic countries see uh, us as part of their uh, natural, natural market, uh, not mm -hmm. only uh, Finland, also Sweden. Sweden uh, to the uh, northwest of us, 
a country also uh, from where a lot of business came to Estonia in the 90s because similarly to Finland they were starting to look for uh, well cheaper options where to produce and where to develop business because their own cost uh, well cost levels were considerably higher but Estonia Latvia Lithuania were coming to closer to the European markets uh -huh. being granted an access to the European markets mm -hmm. so uh, we were quite a good alternative to moving your uh, production further afield so therefore business uh, well ties are extremely close you would call it a single economic area within the European Union even the Nordic Baltic region mm -hmm. to the east there is Russia mm -hmm. and uh, we all know that uh, Russia and maybe even we in Estonia see things differently because for maybe for people from further afield Soviet Union was a well, problematic uh, partner and similarly is Russia a problematic partner now. But for us there is a short period in between when we regained independence uh, where we thought that Russia will follow the same democratic developments like we were undertaking because after all Russia was also well getting rid of the Soviet occupation sure. as such. Yes. So we were very hopeful that the development trends uh, in the countries will be similar, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been the case and uh, we regret it, of course. Are you always looking over your shoulder at Russia? No, definitely not. Uh, as a NATO member state, uh, we do trust NATO has a 100% trust record. Uh, we, we are sure that we are secure here. But of course we are worried about the countries who, uh, who have seen, uh, well, like Georgia and Georgia, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, partial occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also worried about uh, other former Soviet uh, Union uh, countries who, about uh, whose well, right to decide freely with whom to trade and with whom to go also, uh, if we discuss values, uh, is questioned by, by Russia quite like a lot. A, like a Moldova? Uh, maybe they are, yes, and, and, uh, and we see that um, our neighbor would prefer a power-based uh, world order to the value-based world order. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are sorry, of course, for that, but it is as it is. And, uh, well, you know, the European Union applies five principles when talking to Russia and discussing how we should, uh, how we should see our common future here in Europe. Uh, and, uh, and we apply also the same five principles. Uh, no joke intended, but... NATO is your trump card, huh? NATO is definitely an alliance uh, where Estonia is an actively contributing partner. Mm -hmm. uh, together with US troops, uh, we have been in Afghanistan in the hottest places like Helmand. Uh, we are mm -hmm. in Iraq mm -hmm. uh, and elsewhere. We also cooperate with uh, uh, with European Union countries outside NATO missions to stabilize the world. For mm -hmm. example, Estonia is with French in Barkhan mission as well. So we do, uh, we do hope that uh, we are not seen as uh, consumers of security, but rather contributors to the global security here. Democracy, of course. Absolutely. And uh, history lovers dream here. Good news, bad news, occupations, uh, various uh, periods of independence. Uh, paint a picture for the folks at home about uh, the topography of the country, the beauty of the country. Uh, the bogs, the, 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 the nature, the forest. Talk a little bit about that. Well, let's start with our beaches. I always tell to my Central and Southern European friends that if you come to Estonia and go to a beach, and oh. unless you are really in a densely populated area like Tallinn or, or Western Coast, Pärnu and Hapsalu uh, <coughs> beach towns, then please don't sit closer than 100 meters to the next people because it's offensive in Estonia. You have kilometers of sand beach. Why should you go and sit close <laughs> to each other on such a beach? You want your space. Absolutely. We mind our space. It's a country the size of Netherlands with 1.3 million people. We, we think that we are uh, among the richest nations if you count how big proportion of Estonian people can walk around their house without seeing any other house. Uh, or not seeing any other house uh, from their window. Uh, we also really care about uh, the variety of our uh, nature. There are no mountains in Estonia, although the highest mountain in the Baltic states uh, in the glory of 318 meters is in Estonia, and we are very proud of it. Yet the country is not boring and flat. You have bogs, uh, wetlands, uh, you have uh, seaside, uh, which is very colorful all through the summer. Mm. And 
and the Estonians are really crazy about hiking, biking yeah. and being outside uh, in the nature. And we are more and more able also to do it because as we joke here, I mean, you don't have to cut grass anymore yourself for that. You have robots nowadays, so mm -hmm. you are free to hike or grill uh, at the lake sites. Lakes. It's a little cold here, doesn't no, it? No, the lakes get very quickly, very warm in the spring because they are bog lakes. Yeah, so but the you water went past the winter here. <laughs> <laughs> it we gets like, dark and it gets cold. Yes, but it's, uh, it's really compensated by the white nights of June. And also uh -huh. it's quite cozy at the Christmas time when you have a really, you have a really good justification uh, of sitting home and maybe drinking good red wine with your friends after a cross-country skiing trip or something. That sounds nice. Absolutely. What drives the economy here? More and more new technologies because uh, ICT is now already 7% of the GDP. ICT services. What percent again? Seven percent. Okay. If you think that one percent of the GDP is spent by the government to develop the ICT services of the public sector, and probably the same amount by companies here in Estonia to develop digital services, then the rest is already poor services export. Mm -hmm. We also still do classic, traditional, uh, for example, wood industry. Yes. Estonia, uh, when I last checked, uh, was the biggest uh, importer of the wooden houses, pre-fabricated uh, mm. wooden houses to Germany. So a lot of these uh, alpine wooden uh, nice houses, which you see uh, around the, uh, well, cows and cowbells in, mm -hmm. uh, in Central Europe actually, are made here in Estonia. Estonians have built the highest uh, wooden house uh, in the world, it's in Norway. Maybe somebody has now surpassed it, but uh, at least a year ago this was, this was truth. So, so we do a lot of uh, innovation also in wood industry because wooden, wooden construction is economically uh, becoming more and more feasible. It's, uh, it's safe to environment and it saves uh, Actually, uh, the CO2, which the trees have basically taken in, will be, will be saved in, within these houses for a long time. You so have 50% of so the country as far as? Uh, more, more even, yes. yes. Yes, there's quite a lot and there is a constant discussion how much of this forest we can afford to cut yes. and how much we need to preserve. So uh, I think it's quite natural that uh, we have this discussion and indeed I believe that uh, we can have it both ways. Mm. The wood industry and safe uh, nature reserves. So the agriculture, manufacturing, of course, in there, the whole digital world. Talk about the culture. What, do, what would you say is at the heart of the culture of Estonia? Music. Music? Music, but uh, also, uh, it's so interesting. Uh, you don't look yourself at it this way, but uh, we did when Estonia turned 100, uh, well, a year ago, mm -hmm. uh, a series of exhibitions outside Estonia and you know culture really gets to other people quicker than anything else like mm. for example I had an Italian TV channel asked me looking at our artists exhibition we had one in Firenze then on Girose mm -hmm. in, in France the question was but this is European art so culture our culture is very European and it helps to explain to other nations who we really are. Mm -hmm. It's not the country close to, just close to Russia. It's a European country mm -hmm. by its culture. But why I said music is because Arvo Pärt is Estonian, of course, and we have conductors who work mm -hmm. globally quite a lot, and, and we have song festival tradition yes. of 150 years already. So 1869 was the first song festival uh, which took place in Estonia. There, too, uh, the songs we sang were mostly written by, by German pastors, but uh, uh, already in the beginning of 20th century, such a kind of uh, uh, Estonian own choir uh, singing uh, culture, tradition, songs uh, came along, and they're quite different. We call the old period the Liedertafel period, and the new is, uh, for me, in my mind, it's. Uh, more, let's say, well, realistic, uh, maybe sometimes even harsh, uh, uh, but strongly representing uh, who Estonians are. Are there values that are important to Estonians, values? Absolutely. Uh, Estonian people were without mm, any freedom for 50 years. Uh -huh. 50 years. Uh -huh. And uh, this taught us that 
even those people who are down to earth, realistic, materialistic, even economy does not develop if there is no freedom in society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let alone, of course, I mean, culture. You cannot have a well developed, well, well varied, mm -hmm. modern culture life without freedoms. Yes, there were very good uh, painters, writers uh, during the occupation period. And uh, you have to say that in Soviet Union, uh, quite a lot of them were allowed to operate, but they had to abide by certain rules. Mm -hmm. uh, and as one of the main functions of the culture is question society, ask also hard, tough questions about the development of society, then culture during the occupation, because of the lack of freedoms, couldn't play this role in society at all. Now it can, and it really fiercely does. Mm. Uh, you're the president, you're also married, you have some kids. Four, four, four yes, children? Four children. How old, how old are the kids? Uh, they are quite varied in their age. My daughter is 30 and I also have two grandchildren. Uh, my oldest son is 26 and my younger ones are 14 and 10. So I'm lazy, I don't have them close to each other. <laughs> uh, what, is your, what does your husband do? My husband right now stays home with kids. Ah. He has a, a history and a background I mean, in engineering, in radio uh -huh. engineering. But do you have time to relax and uh, enjoy? Uh, I mean, this is a tough job you're in right now. I very much enjoy my job as well. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having any fun? That's, that's the question. And what is the fun part of being president? Fun part of being president is uh, representing and proudly representing uh -huh. your country, being able to tell these nice stories about a country which 30 years ago mm couldn't be identified by almost nobody on the global scheme, poor, the closest neighbors. And now wherever you go, people will recognize you are a digital nation. They yes. want to understand why you did it, how you did it. And also it's a country which for many countries is offering hope. They can kind of mm. see the similarities mm -hmm. in the lack of development and in the readiness to well embrace new. And, and they see that this country could serve as a role model. I think this is why Estonia was also elected the uh, non-permanent member of UN yes, Security Council yes. because so many countries could see us as a hopeful story, an inspiring story and an interesting story. What in your lifetime so far is the biggest lesson you've learned? The day my um, well-being uh, in this country changed most was the day when I realized that I can speak out and not be afraid. Because we all grew up knowing that we have to censor what we say, hopefully not what we think. Mm -hmm. We have to take care that we don't talk about things which were dear to us, to well, people we really, really didn't know very well, and sometimes even those people could betray you. Mm -hmm. So economy takes time to develop, but freedoms can be granted in one day. And we had this change in our lifetime. It's wonderful opportunity for all of us in our generation. So there are 180 countries out there, give or take. What lesson can they learn from Estonia? The most important thing is that the policymakers have to embrace new, not to try to even pay or create legal barriers for the new technologies ah, okay. in the society. Mm -hmm. And also to accept that for new technologies to smoothly function and safely function and provide for the society, it's not only the responsibility of private sector, it's innovative legal space which you need to set mm. in order to make this thing happen. Mm -hmm. Like Estonia is not a digital wild west. Estonian digital legal space is much more regulated than globally and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Starting from the fact that uh, our people have had for 18 years the digital passport, mm -hmm, and digital mm -hmm. ID, mm -hmm. uh, and only this form of identification has state guarantee. And this is something which states have to do to their citizens when you are talking about, well, new technologies and working towards the future. Don't try to, well, do exactly how other countries before you did things because this was the advice offered very often to us. And we realized that, sorry, you don't catch up if <laughs> you do the things which others did before you. Because uh -huh. repeating is more expensive and doesn't bring the same benefits. Mm -hmm. Find your own way. Do things differently if you believe you are right. Do them in a democratic format, which means keep the positive support of your people. 
and don't be afraid of the mm. new. The new definitely will be better than the old. We talk a lot nowadays about loss of jobs in old sectors, but if you think the old transformations from agricultural to industrial uh, well, uh, model of economy, the old jobs were lost indeed, but there were always new more. Madam President. Thank you for the Thank education. You. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Thank you. Greetings from the United States. Thank you. And greetings to the United States. Thank you. Thank you. For information about This Is America and the World, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, or our YouTube channel, This Is America TV, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by Japan history, hospitality, and advanced technology sharing tomorrow. The Washington Diplomat, a world of news and perspective. The Sultanate of Oman. The Estonian American National Council, Enterprise Estonia, and the European Regional Development Fund, and the Foreign Ministry of the Republic of Estonia. The U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, Julia Chang Block, President. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy presenting international artists in diplomatic settings.